Thank you. Thank you, Gov. And it's a real honor to be here with you, Joe Fallon, and your family team, as well as to James and your dad, Justin. I think he said 95. I don't think any one of us believe that. Uh, thank you. Obviously, the Shamit group and the Fallon group coming together, good things have happened, and we are very grateful for your leadership and your collaboration. I do want to give a big shout out to the men and women in the navy blue shirts uh, for what you're doing every single day. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. You're saving lives here and around the world. I also want to recognize my colleagues in government, Senator Timothy, Rep. Dubois, and Congressman Lynch's office. Thank you for your leadership as well. And as was said, I'm pleased that the MERT program, the Manufacturing Emergency Response Team, was an inspiration to your vision and the relatively small grant of $2.7 million uh, clearly inspired a major investment on your behalf to see this happen. We made $16.2 million in grants available to manufacturers to support pivots to make PPE, masks, gowns, gloves across our Commonwealth so that we as a Commonwealth are ready and resilient and can meet uh, future needs as they come to us. So we are very grateful. Relative to educator vaccines, I'd like to make an announcement on our plans to provide designated days for K through 12 educators, K through 12 school staff and child care workers to get vaccinated at mass vaccination locations. As you all know, last month we announced that these education workers would be eligible to book appointments in Massachusetts beginning Thursday, March 11th. This was to align Massachusetts with the Biden-Harris administration's directive for states to prioritize teacher vaccinations. To support this goal, our administration is announcing four days are being designated at the state's seven mass vaccination sites where appointments will only be offered to K-12 educators, K-12 school staff, and child care workers. These dates are Saturday, March 27th, Saturday, April 3rd, Saturday, April 10th, and Sunday, April 11th. Educators looking to sign up at these seven sites must use the pre-registration system to request an appointment and the test that they are indeed a K-12 educator, K-12 school staff member, or child care worker. A full list of examples of these workers is available at mass.gov forward slash COVID vaccine. All other vaccine providers, including regional collaboratives, are encouraged but not required to restrict their appointments to K-12 educators, child care workers, and K-12 school staff on these days for consistency. If these four days are not feasible for a provider, they may designate alternative dates if necessary. Clinics may not restrict access to individuals who live or work in a particular area. The command center will post a full list of designated educator vaccination days for regional collaboratives next week. Starting March 11th, K-12 educators, K-12 school staff, and child care workers can book appointments through mass.gov forward slash COVID vaccine and through the federal retail pharmacy program through retail pharmacies like CVS. This group of workers is eligible to get a vaccine at any of the Commonwealth's 170 public vaccine sites. Given the limited supply of vaccine, K-12 educators, child care workers, and K-12 school staff may not receive vaccine until maybe even mid-April or later, depending on supply. While we are designating four specific days to help vaccinate, a good portion of the 400,000 workers in this group, they will otherwise join the pool of eligible residents who can get a vaccine. It is important that we continue to provide access to other eligible groups, like residents over 65 and individuals with two medical conditions. Our goal is to provide vaccine to all eligible residents, but we can only move as fast as the federal supply allows us to. We look forward to supply increasing 
in the coming weeks and months so we can vaccinate more of our residents. Thank you again. It's a real honor to be here with all of you. I'd now like to turn it over to Secretary Sutters. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and our friends from Fallon and Shawmut, I have to say, as I was walking through here, it was hard, hard not to remember last March and April and our scrambling for PPE and the fact that we're standing here, there's a domestic supply chain, domestic manufacturing, and domestic getting it out the door. I often, to my staff, I say, thank you for your incredible efforts to get my favorite four-letter, three-letter word, PPE, out the door. As the governor indicated, the pre-registration system will go live this Friday. The process will hopefully ease some of the anxiety and the burden folks have been experiencing trying to secure an appointment because of the constrained supply of vaccine. I'm going to give a little bit more detail of how the process will work, although the governor did a pretty good job. The form will collect the basic information like name, address, as well as eligibility information such as occupation and whether the resident has certain medical conditions. The form will also collect email and phone number and ask for the preferred contact method, email, text message, or phone call. Once the resident has registered, their information will be added to the pre-registration list. Available appointments will be offered to groups of eligible pre-registered residents on a rolling basis. When appointments become available, the eligible, eligible, uh, eligible residents on the pre-registration list will begin receiving notifications via the preferred contact method. If you selected email or text as your preferred contact method, you will receive a customized link that only you can use to view and book available appointments on the scheduling website for a mass vaccination location. And you have 24 hours to do it, so don't panic. If you selected a phone call as your preferred contact method, you will receive a call with information about the available appointment. You will have the option to ask for help booking over the phone when signing up on the pre-registration form. One day before you're offered an appointment, you will receive a notification allowing you to plan. And once you're prompted to book an available appointment, like I said, you will have 24 hours to book that appointment. To accommodate older residents and others who are unable to use the form, the pre-registration form allows family members, caregivers, or other trusted companions to fill it out on behalf. Residents who do not have internet access or someone to fill the form out for them can call 211 and our community services representatives will help them pre-register. And finally, as we all know, as we, as we go our way and seek vaccinations, we have other tools available to us. Testing. Testing is an important public health tool in addition to contact tracing, complying with public health mitigation measures such as face coverings, physical distancing, staying home when sick, and good hygiene to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Since the very beginning of the pandemic, the Commonwealth has been a leader in the nation on COVID-19 testing. To date, almost 17 million COVID tests have been conducted across all of our testing providers, and 1.8 million have been conducted at the Stop the Spread locations through, as of March 3rd. We currently operate Stop the Spread testing at 38 locations across 24 cities and towns. The price per test has dramatically decreased over time from about, originally it was about $136 a test to now it's about $67 a test. Yesterday, we announced an extension of the Stop the Spread COVID-19 initiative, which provides the free COVID-19 testing across the Commonwealth. From March 31st, when we thought we might sunset it, now through June 30th of 2021. Residents of the state may visit mass.gov, get tested, to find testing locations. 